creep closer to ending the NFL's longest playoff drought. But this morning, Key, I want to quickly start, even though there is so much talk about the Browns, I want to start with the Ravens and Lamar Jackson coming out of the locker room and reminding us, cramp or no cramp, crimping the Brown style, that he is a game changer for the ages. I started cramping on the field. Like, the two passes I throw, like right before those two passes I throw to Willie and Mark, the overthrows, I was cramping my, my throwing arm. And I'm telling the coach, I'm like, man, I need to get some salt in my system real quick. And, you know, we run the ball. I'm on the sideline. We end up catch, Tyson end up catching the pick on the interception. We go down the score. And right after that, I get a ball to JK, and my leg just started cramping. And I'm like, bro, like, I need something now like, to help me get better real quick because this is this a, a crucial game right here. You know, both teams be playing their hearts out. And we went to the back. You didn't have to use the bathroom or anything in the back, right? You know, it's, there's a lot of talk on social media that – you were kind of like jogging, like, yes, he used the bathroom or something. I was cramping. I ain't putting a Paul Pierce. I didn't put Paul Pierce. I, I was cramping. He no wheelchair. We saw it last night. Got out there and returned under his own power. Key, I'm sure you'd love that, considering that wheelchair moment, of course, came against your Lakers. But what did you make of that amazing moment? The Ravens right back in the thick of the playoff chase. They're in the eighth spot on the outside looking in. But with the momentum they have and an easy opponent on the way Sunday, perhaps a chance for a little momentum. I think it's great. Uh, you know, when it, whenever you see a guy like this do the things that he's capable of doing, going in, needing to get what he needed to get to get back out on the field, you know, when you start cramping, you know, there's all sorts of different concoctions and remedies that people do, whether it's pickle juice, whether it's Pedialyte, all sorts of things. So he goes in the locker room, he gets that. He knows that his team desperately needs him no matter what the situation is. He goes right back out there and he gets the job done. How could you, you know, he couldn't have written this any better, right? I mean, this is Monday Night Football, you know, in the same draft class as Baker Mayfield, two former Heisman Trophy candidates going up, or winners going up against each other. It's just amazing to see that he's able to come out there and deliver the football in sync the, the way that he was able to do it. Now, throwing the ball back against the grain, I didn't necessarily like that. But he, com he completed a great pass against Hollywood Brown. I mean, for, with Hollywood Brown against the Cleveland Browns. So you can't complain about what he was able to do. This is why this young man was the former MVP in the National Football League. And there's so much conversation swirling around whether or not he's a franchise quarterback. You do it in different ways. He's a franchise quarterback. You just do it in different ways. Zubin, I know we're going to have four hours to talk about football. We're going to be breaking down why Lamar Jackson reminded us of being the former MVP, how Baker Mayfield electrified his team, even though after throwing the turnover, leading them down, leading them in the comeback, being down 14 points. But I got to tell you, brother, I rode with the Browns last night. I got in late. I got in plus 3.5. And I got to tell you, the lateral passes at the end of the game and the safety by Jarvis Landry, I took my phone essentially, and almost threw it at the wall. I have a backup phone. That's how I felt last night after I lost a lot of money. I'm just going to say it to you. I'm really mad. I have to vent my frustration to the American people because I feel like a lot of people were in the same boat that I was in last night. And I know Key's going to tell me, well, that's why you don't bet. Don't do things like that. I'm just saying, I, I had it. I had it. And the lateral passes to the safety broke my spirit last night. That's all I'm going to say. Let's get back to football. Sorry. I don't think they. I don't think they were playing the game based on your. I don't really care what you have to say right now, Keyshawn. Financial really care, betting Joseph, and things of that nature. Say, Joseph, it doesn't help me right now. Lay out. Well, that's not my. Don't bet. That's you on go. you. Zubin, I it was love a, the it was a, it was a, I love it. It was a great Thank Monday you. night game, one that we hadn't seen in a very, very long time. And I think what I take away from this is the Cleveland Browns are still in it. The, they, they, they should build on this. You know, I've been in situations when I was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we lost to the Philadelphia Eagles. It felt like every single time that we took the field against the Eagles, we were losing. And eventually, we got over the hump in the playoffs in the, the NFC Championship game. We went on and won the Super Bowl the next year. We went back to Philadelphia opening day, and we kicked the you-know-what out of them. So I think Cleveland is headed in the right direction. It, you know, there's no such thing as moral victories. At least I don't believe in moral victories, but... From a outsider looking in, 
there's a lot of positive signs to take away from this in that 47-42 thriller on a Monday night football game. Uh, it's it just, you know, I take a lot away from it from a positive standpoint. I really do. I'm with you, Kate. I was going to say something real quick back to football. Look, it was the game of the year. Last night was the game of the year. Prime time like that. To see it come back, to see Lamar Jackson pull the Willis Reed essentially come back onto the field, uh, lead them back into this game to win this game down the stretch of a field goal, 55-yard field goal. Um, it speaks volumes about this game. Lamar Jackson saved the season for the Ravens. Saved the season. And it goes to show you how special of a talent he is having him on the field. There's no doubt about it. About 50 years ago, as Jay referenced, Willis Reed saved the Knicks season, their championship <laughs> season, by limping back out there. And a half century later, Paul the Pierce did work. the same thing. <laughs> saved Boston Celtics season. <laughs> You're right about that. Wheelchair aided or not. We're asking on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed this morning, which team would you fear more in a playoff game? I know the sample size is small, and we're always reacting to what we just saw. But take a deep breath. Is it the Ravens or the Browns? Be a part of the Keyshawn J. Will and Zubin Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed, ESPN Nation, presented by Dr. Pepper. It's official. College football is back, and so is your favorite Dr. Pepper-loving college football town, Fansville. Head to a store near you to treat your inner college football fan to a nice cold 20-ounce Dr. Pepper today. Quickly on the schedule front, I mentioned it's a little bit. It's not quite a bye week for the Ravens, but they do have a short week in Jacksonville, which I guess does qualify somewhat of a bye week. The Jags have lost 12 in a row, and with everything going on with the Ravens with COVID, it's a good opportunity to sort of maybe get things in order and reset against one of the NFL's worst teams. Meanwhile, the Browns, this is so 2020. The Cowboys have been flexed out of 2020's Sunday night game for the Browns, and the Browns will take on the Giants short week big stage for Cleveland again. We'll see if this time they can come through with America watching on a Sunday night as opposed to last night. Key real quick, I'm not going to cast aspersions on either team's defense when one scored 47 and one scored 42, but I know you have some concerns about Cleveland's D. Yeah, you know, just when you start to look at the matchups that they could face down the line in the playoffs if they get in the playoffs, which I think they will based on the, the remaining schedule and the way things are shaken out in the AFC. But when you start looking at the prize, you got to look at Kansas City. Can they hold up against an explosive offense like Kansas City? Can they punish again the Tennessee Titans and stop that power running game with Derrick Henry a second time around? Can they stop the Baltimore Ravens a potential third time around? So when you look at those sort of things, what happens in a resurgence of Phillip Rivers in the Indianapolis Colts when they come to town? I mean, it's just all of those sort of things you have to look at when you start talking about